Pilots and welcome to this X-Wing Mods video brought to you by Out of Art Gaming. As always, my name is Phil, and in this video we'll be looking at magnetising ships and their bases. Now this video is not sponsored, however we use the Green Stuff World Rotation Magnus as our magnus of choice, and in this video we'll go over the tools you need, how to remove the pegs and attach the magnet, also how to prepare and attach the rotation ball to the stand. We'll also go over the reasons and pros to magnetise your ships. So let's have a quick look at the tools we'll be using for this. Now we have a selection of pliers and clippers. We have a flat nose pair of clippers which are good and for easy to reach pegs. We also have a pair of needle nose clippers. These are especially handy for the harder to reach pegs as you'll see later in this video. The clippers will be used to remove the insert part of the peg stand ready for sanding. We also have some sandpaper, however we can use a modelling file as well if you we prefer. And last but certainly not least, we do have some super glue. You can use any super glue you have to hand, but as you're bonding two different materials, you'll need to use super glue for this. So here we have a selection of ships which we're going to magnetize, four of which we have magnetized, and four that we'll be doing later in this video. Now, let's have a quick look at a direct comparison between the version 1 A Wing that has already been magnetized and the Phoenix Cell A Wing. As you can see, the magnet is situated in the place of the original peg on the model. Some people do prefer to countersink their magnets using a small drill bit to make less of a pronounced profile for the magnet. However, we prefer simply removing the peg and attaching the magnet. Now, this is because not all ships, such as the Vulture Droid, have enough size to allow you to countersink the magnets. We also prefer to attach the magnet to the ship rather than the stand. Now some of the reasons you may wish to magnetise your ship are as follows. You may have damaged pegs. We've all got damaged pegs, some that break or fall off. And this is a great way to replace them. Loose pegs. Not all pegs and stands are made equal. Sometimes you have to hunt through your stands to find the right one to fit some ugly. Looks. Nothing looks cooler than banking your Arc 170s or tie interceptors as they're doing a 2 or 3 bank. Ease of play. Now, some ships are large and have bits that stick out over the base. Rather than removing the ship, you can just tilt it to avoid those ships bumping. Now, in a moment, what we'll do is we'll have a look at removing some of those pegs and getting them magnetised onto the bases. Now, let's have a look at removing the pegs from your ships. It's not too obvious to stress at this point that when doing this, you will need to be careful of fragile parts on your models, specifically the X-Wing lasers, TIE fighter wings and other protrusions that are on your models. These can be broken if you are not careful with them. Now I have a few different ships to show the level of ease of removing the pegs. Now we tend to use the needle nose pegs for this, it's just easier for us. Now with your pliers, take a firm grip on the peg. You'll want to gently twist the model and this will start to break that connection. Now we recommend not using too much force initially, just so you can get it, get the process going. Once you feel the peg start to twist, you can either adjust the pliers or continue twisting it until that peg comes away. Now this should leave a nice flat surface exactly where the peg was, so you can actually attach your magnet to that point. This keeps the center of gravity for your ship nice and level. However, with the magnet, it should be strong enough to actually hold this. Now, if we have a look at a slightly easier ship here, alongside the A-Wing, you've got the HMP. Now, again, with this, you do have to be a bit careful. You can't go full twist on this because you do have to take into account those multi-missile pods and also the laser cannons on the front nose. So be sure that you have a nice, firm, but careful grip when doing this. Once you feel it start to go, then just continue to twist until it pops off nicely. And as you can see, this should leave a nice flat area for you to glue your magnet on later. Now, I'm going to have a quick look at the tie interceptor. Now, this one is a little bit trickier. It's not as easy to get a good grip on it as you have to grip it by the cockpit. And those wings, again, make it difficult to get a complete twist. So you're going to have to do short twists up to about 90 degrees. But if you continue with this going carefully, you should be able to get those off. And if you find it easier, you can actually grip it from a more downwards motion. But as you can see, with a little bit of gentle force, we were able to get that off there. 
Now this also works for your large base and medium base ships. There are several different sizes of pegs from small, medium, large and extra large. We have actually done this to our Gazanti as well. Wouldn't recommend doing it on all of the epic ships as it's hard to get in there. Now with the Tide Defender, this is probably one of the trickier ships that you will have to try and take the peg off. So you've got to be quite careful of this. Again, you'll need to get a firm grip on the cockpit and the engines at the back. You'll have to go in quite vertical to this, as you can see, and really gently, but with a good amount of force, just get that twist going. This one we do suggest giving it a twist and then reapplying your pliers to get that motion back in there. But eventually, you will see that it will come off quite nicely. Now, should you find there is a little bit of the peg still left on there, you can use a small pair of clippers or a little bit of sandpaper or a modeling file just to file that down nice and smooth. However, the magnets that you get from Green Stuff World do have a small hole in the middle, which will allow you to actually position that over any small bits of protrusions that are on there. Now it's actually attaching the magnets, so get your super glue to hand. It's always a good idea to have your magnets attached to something as they may tend to fly around if you've got other magnets or metallic surfaces around. So we've actually got these attached to our pliers so we have them nice and easy to hand so that we can actually grab them and it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Now again, starting with the HMP here, we have that nice flat surface and you can see where the original peg was. This is where we're going to apply a little bit of super glue and we will attach the magnet to this point. So obviously just be careful with the super glue, you don't want a huge amount on there, just enough to cover that surface and that is about the right size for that small magnet as well. Now when attaching the magnet, just double check, you have a flat side and a concave side. You want to be attaching the flat side to your ship. The concave side is what will actually go and connect to the rotation ball that we'll be attaching to our stand shortly. Now as you can see that's on quite nicely. Um, just going to apply a little bit of pressure just to allow that bond to set. And once you're happy with the positioning of that, pop it to one side and allow that to dry. Now again, it's always quite good to pop that as flat as you can so that you can continue to work on other ships. Now we tend to do four or five ships at a time, just makes it nice and quick and that way you can get through a sizable amount in one go. Now with the small pack for the green stuff, world rotation magnets, you get 15 magnets and 15 of the ball bearings in the pack. So you can get quite a few done in one go. The larger packs, you do get slightly less in there, but you're less likely to need those. Now with the larger ships, there are some where you can use the large magnets. However, there are some which is ideal for using the extra large magnets. And those are the ones with the interesting center of gravities. You'll be looking at the Upsilon, the YV666, and also if you do decide to magnetize it, the Ghost would be ideal for the extra large magnets, giving you more hold to keep them actually upright. Now, as you can see with the TIE Interceptor, again, we've got that nice flat surface there for it. However, being on the round cockpit, it can be a little bit trickier and also getting it to sit flat when you want that glue to dry is also a tad tricky. So we do suggest holding it for a little bit longer, making sure that bond is definitely set. Now, it can be a bit fiddly. If you do have any form of plastic tweezers, this could be quite handy. Obviously, if you're using metal tweezers, the magnet is likely just to come straight off with that. Um, but don't worry, you might get some super glue on your fingers. Although it's uncomfortable, it's not necessarily going to cause you any pain there at all. And finally, let's have a look at the Tide Defender. Now, again, this one is going to be a bit trickier with the way the wings are situated on the model. So it's going to be a little bit fiddlier. Do have patience and persevere with it. You will eventually get it on there. 
If you do need help with that, then use a pair of plastic tweezers to hold it in place. But again, just a small amount of glue on there. Get the magnet the right way around. Now we've done a few tie defenders already, so we have a little bit of practice. Again, it's definitely worth just holding on there, making sure it's firm. As you can see, this one was causing us a little bit of issue, but eventually we got it there. And that bond is normally done quite quickly, but it is always worth leaving it for a couple of minutes just to let that set. Now let's move on to the bases and see how we actually prep those. Now what we have here is a base that we've done already and a base that we are going to do. So let's have a look at the first base. So as you can see, we've removed that top part of the peg that would normally go in. We've just clipped that off and we've actually filed it down so that we can actually attach that magnet on there. Now uh, they might not always sit exactly flush. So there are a couple of things you can do to help with that. But let's have a look at removing the actual plastic peg now so it's always easier to take it out of the stand itself just give you a bit more comfortability holding that so get your plastic clippers or any good sharp pair of clippers these are actually fresh ones out of the pack now be careful when clipping this as that plastic peg might fire off the top so we've done that straight down into the mat you don't want any loose bits of plastic flying around now, as you can see, it's not a particularly great cut on there. It has left quite a bit of that peg. So what we will actually do is get some sandpaper and just file that down. You can do this with a modeling file as well. Now, once you've got this nice and smooth, you can then start to look to attach the actual rotation ball magnet to it. Now, a couple of things you can do here to make it a little bit easier. If you do have access to a Dremel or a small pin drill, you can actually put a little hole towards the center of the peg. This will give the magnet a nice little flush section to actually sit into. Now, when we magnetize this to the base to again assist in trying to keep a flat surface, what we do is we put it back into the base and then we will actually carefully apply some glue and then attach the rotation ball to this. Now, with this being the non-magnetic part, you can use a pair of pliers or a pair of tweezers to hold this if you're concerned about any form of glue getting on your fingers. Now, when you are using a pin drill, if you have access to a small vise, that is definitely preferable. Obviously in this situation, we don't actually have a vice, so we're being a little bit risky in just doing that straight down, but as long as you're careful, you should be okay. You don't need to put a lot of pressure on and you don't need to put a large hole in that. Now, as I mentioned earlier, just a small drop of glue in there. And carefully place the ball on there, hold it in place for a couple of seconds. Now you see that one is slightly off center, so I'm just going to move it. Once you're happy with the position of it, again, just leave it to bond nicely and then pop it to one side. Now, the temptation might be to test the magnets out straight away. Give it a bit of time just in case the glue is not set. You don't want that flying off. And here we go. Here are four ships magnetized and on their bases. Now, this is not a long process at all. We can normally do four ships in roughly 10 minutes, including time to allow the glue to dry. The bases can take a little bit longer, but if you do them in batches, you can normally get through quite a few ships in a short space of time. And as you can see, you can actually pick the ships up quite nicely and there's no risk of them coming off the stand, which is, as we all know, a very frustrating time when we are playing. 
and as we mentioned earlier you can bank those ships on the stand as well which we're not going to lie looks really cool when you're playing so i hope this helps you out guys and i hope that you consider magnetizing your ships as well to give a bit more dynamic poses and just to make them a bit more secure on the bases but thank you very much for watching please don't forget to like the video subscribe to the channel and we will see you next time